Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. This is the midweek supplemental edition, number 191. Uh, today on the show, we're going to be talking about Alessandra DeSantis. She gets signed with Boker. Uh, I'll talk about a couple of new bucks, a weird new uh, knife from Tops. They always come out with weird new knives. That's one of the things I love about them. And then we're going to talk about my top 10 quarantine slash sweatpants knives. Now, as you may have known, we missed Thursday night knives. I got a, I got a bit of the, uh, got a bit of the sickness going around, and I, I want to thank you all so much for your well wishes. Uh, I got a, an awful lot of uh, um, emails and comments of people uh, hoping I get better quickly, and I want to say thank you very much to everyone. Um, I appreciate it greatly, and I'm also here to tell you, and I'm not preaching, but take it seriously because it's serious. Okay. So uh, before we get going uh, into the show, I wanted to talk about what today's sweatpants knives are because I am not out of the woods yet, and so I am not in my regular garb these days. So I am thinking about knives that I can heft, that I can carry around in lighter, less structured pants, if you will. Um, now today's choice might not be the best because I feel it uh, rocking around against my leg as I walk, but man. I do love this knife so much, and it was given to me by uh, a, a great viewer, and um, it, just having it makes me feel good. So today I'm carrying this quite gigantic Super CQC15. Um, this obviously is an Emerson, and one of the things I love about this design is the way it combines the recurve blade shape of the... Um, Emerson Commander there with the faceted Americanized Tanto tip that you'll see on the CQC7. This is a really kind of a cool combination knife, and I think that the design could have gone awfully. And I think that uh, with that swedge and with everything else, I think uh, Ernest Emerson pulled this design off beautifully. Um, this is a big one. This is at four inches. And uh, if you know Emerson and the super sizes, you know they they do minis for a lot of the a lot of the models, mini versions, regular versions, and the regular version blades tend to linger around the 3.75 inch mark. And then they do the supers, and the supers are at about four inches. Now this knife here, like I said, was a gift, and uh, it was a it was. <laughs> It was a great gift to get because a, I mean, who doesn't want to receive an Emerson from a, from a fan or, or from a, a viewer, uh, a, but b, I used to have a CQC 15 and sold it at one point and always regretted it, you know. But I have trouble buying back knives I've gotten rid of because there are so many fish in the sea that uh, you know it was going to be a long time before I got around to buying another CQC 15, let alone a super, and. Um, I gotta say, the Super really uh, <clears throat> expands the handle out enough to give you a full grip without feeling like the bird's beak here and the and and the forward uh, guard here are hemming you in. So it's a nice roomy handle. You can lengthen out your grip to a saber grip like this, or squeeze into a hammer grip. And look at all that extra space I got. So today, this is what I'm carrying, and this is this is the only. Usually, I have two because I'm usually carrying a slip joint or something else in my other pocket. But as I convalesce and, and just sort of, you know, um, float around the house like a phantom here, uh, just, just one knife is going to do me, I think. So today it is this here CQC 15. Now, speaking of viewers and generosity, um, thanks again to the gentleman who gave me this. He never wanted to be named, but thank you, sir. You know who you are. Uh, I want to thank two new viewers, two new patrons, uh, two new gentlemen junkies, uh, John Ladner and Martin Gamboa. Thank you both, gentlemen. Uh, over this past week, they pledged to become uh, gentlemen junkies on the Patreon uh, page here for the Knife Junkie. And uh, that's at the $10 per month level, which gives them um, 
well, they'll get stickers, they'll get their names mentioned as they just have. Um, and then they will uh, also get put into the monthly knife giveaway. That's something we do every month here on Thursday Night Knives, where we give away a special knife to some special patron at the $10 level, a gentleman junkie. And uh, we've been doing it, we've, I guess we've done it about six months now and had some really great knife giveaways. We're, we were going to be doing one this week, which would be tomorrow night. Uh, but seeing as I've kind of set myself back a bit with all this illness and stuff, we're gonna we're gonna put off the uh, the giveaway to February twenty fifth. So John and Martin, thank you both a million. Thank you so much. And uh, next week, tune into Thursday Night Knives at at um, ten p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube on the Knife Junkie uh, channel. And uh, during that show, we will we will bring out the wheel of destiny. Jim will spin that wheel of destiny. Your names, John and Martin, will be on it and you will be eligible to win whatever that fantastic knife is. And truth be told, I don't know what it is, but when we're done recording here today, I'm going to I'm going to go lurk lurk on all my favorite websites and and see what um, see what it's going to be. Uh, that's how the that's how the giveaways usually work. It's kind of whatever whatever is my fancy that month. Um, and then occasionally we we get uh, we'll get donations from fans and we'll give those away too. So um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so signing up for Patreon isn't just giving us money to help us with infrastructure, to help us with uh, costs and apps and stuff like that. Uh, but it's also entering you into a contest to win. It's uh, You get something out of it too. So check it out. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll put the link down, down below. Um, still to come on the show today. Uh, we're going to talk about Alessandro DeSantis. We'll talk about a couple of new buck knives and uh, a weird, weird new kukri from Tops. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Alessandra DeSantis. I love the name. She is a, a a woman from Italy who's been designing knives under the Hydra design uh, label for a while. And uh, she is just coming out with these really, really cool looking knives that the first couple I've seen have been from We. She did the Roman, uh, which is this beautiful uh, folder uh, in the tradition of a ancient Roman folder. Well, now she is uh, signing with Boker out of Germany and uh, has a number of knives coming out. The first one coming out with them is called the, um, what's this called? The Yokai, that's right. Okay, so this this is basically has all of her standard um, sort of design cues, that really, really interesting uh, blade shape and flipper slash uh, thumb ramp um, design. Uh, but this is in a in a more pared down version. Now this uh, yokai looks a bit like her first release from Wee Knife Company, the Hecate folder. But this is a um, in terms of material, it's 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 brought down a bit uh, into a more affordable realm. So instead of the high end steel that we used on the Hecate, this one is using D2 steel. This one is using an FRN handle, aluminum backspacer. And this one also has a glass breaker. Um, this is a this is a nice entry into um, a more affordable realm. If you like her designs, uh, the Boker Plus collection is going to get you into an Alessandra DeSantis uh, design for much less. Uh, this knife has a very extreme sort of uh, tanto uh, tip, uh, faceted Americanized tanto tip. It's like I mentioned, it's got the D2, D2 steel and, uh, and the FRN handles. And, and it, it really is a, uh, a great way for her to break into a, a broader market. I think, her interest, I think her designs are very interesting. I like this sort of, if you look here at this picture, you see the flipper and, and in relation with the, um, with the thumb stud on top, you see how they're both hollow there. That's, a, um, that's really a design signature of hers. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to see that on a number of different blades. 
Now, all that being said, my favorite Alessandro de Santis design is that Roman because it really does tap into an ancient Italian folding knife design, kind of like we've been seeing the patata. The patata came out from Spiderco and also Extrema Ratio um, did a version of the patata. And I love this idea. It's one of the reasons I love Cold Steel, incidentally. I love this idea of taking ancient designs and updating them, especially folders, because we don't think of ancient folders as much as, or, or folders from antiquity than, than uh, we do regular just daggers and, and long knives and such. Um, yeah, uh, Jim just pulled up her Instagram page and uh, see that Roman knife is the one in the middle with the chocolate eclair. <laughs> very appealing, very appealing knife. She also incidentally, uh, yeah, look at that thing. That's beautiful. Our good friend Dave over at uh, this old Blade Reviews has that, loves that knife. He, she's also coming out with a sort of karambity thing uh, that you can take handles on and off of. As you can see from those forearm bruises, she's been practicing. So this is all about the tactical knife design. And there she is. Uh, there she is herself. So looking forward to seeing what comes from Alessandro DeSantis and Boker this year. Um, Boker as always, is just tearing it up. Some interesting stuff uh, about Boker and Fred Perrin. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. That's uh, late breaking and I sort of witnessed it happening on Instagram. Maybe a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of friction about who created a design. So we'll, maybe we'll get to the bottom of that next week, but keep your eye for the new Boker stuff coming from Alessandro DeSantis. Next is Buck 2021. They have the Legacy Collection every year. They come out with upgraded versions of their classics. And, uh, you know, it's no surprise that they're going to do that with the 110. They do that quite frequently. They'll, they'll upgrade and change and, and give you all sorts of custom options. The Legacy Collection 110 this year is a beautiful version. It's got... Uh, it's got uh, a thumb stud, as you can see, and some unusual things here. It's got an aluminum frame instead of brass, so it's going to be a lot lighter. And it's got carbon fiber handle scale inlays. All very interesting and, you know, nice to look at. It looks like you can also adjust the pivot there. But a very, very uh, unique thing about this is that it's the first uh, buck to sport the S45 VN steel. It's the first 110 to have the S45 VN steel. Now, I have not had any experience with the S45 yet. Obviously, it's it's 10 better than what we're used to with the S35 VN. And it's cool to see uh, Buck using it because sometimes I tend to think that Buck, you know, lags a little bit behind because they still use a 420 HC. Well, it just so happens that they know how to heat treat 420 HC and make it a great steel. So they're not reliant on the on the fanciest uh, alphanumeric combinations in steel uh, to to sell their knives or to make high quality, you know, high performance knives. But what a what a great thing to see S45 VN on the 110 with all these other flourishes. Now, if I'm going to be 100 percent honest, I don't like the way it looks. To me, I like the 110 in brass and wood, and um, you can still give me the S45 VN on a brass and wood 110. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of all of the hardware you see on this thing. Look, you see the pivot, which is new, and if you're going to see anything, I guess I'd want to see the pivot because that gives you some adjustability. Uh, but you see three screws on the inlay. You see you see a, two screws on the on the end bolster, and uh, that that giant thumb stud. Um, eh, aesthetically, it doesn't do it for me. You can tell that you get great purchase on it. It looks like one of the early uh, Kershaw blur thumb studs just sort of uh, oriented in a slightly different uh, direction. But, you know, they're not making this knife for me. They're making it for everybody. And um, I think this will go over beautifully. You know, the marbled carbon fiber and, and the upgraded materials, you know, really is bound to make this uh, an imminently more usable knife. I think people leave their Buck 110s at home because they are boat anchors. And unless you're wearing a leather pouch on your belt, um, it might be just too heavy rattling around in your pocket. So this could be the perfect remedy. Now, they're also doing an upgrade of the 55. Now, the 55 is a smaller version 
Uh, it's a, sort of a, a smaller cousin of the of the 110, and I think it's a beautifully, beautifully uh, designed knife. It it really is a the perfect little lockback. And they're doing a similar thing to this. They're giving it S30V, so they're giving it a super steel, but also with the uh, with that really nice marbled carbon fiber inlay. You say, Bob, you hate carbon fiber. I know, I know I do, but <clears throat> I don't hate it all. I do like the exotic carbon fibers like this, the, the non-regular weave. And to me, on this little gentleman's folder, it just looks mm, very nice. So I've always liked the, the number 55. And I think that that uh, in this new version, this updated uh, legacy collection version, it just uh, well, looks like a winner. And uh, it's a knife I'd be proud to carry. Now, lastly, the last one I want to mention from Buck is an automatic. And we don't see too many automatics coming out of Buck. Uh, this one is called the 898 Impact. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you look at this, it, it's got, uh, well, you'll just look at it. It's got carbon fiber. It's got, uh, you know, I'm not even sure of, of the steel here. Uh, it's got a, let me, let me take a look. <laughs> Sorry. Well, oh, it is S35 VN. It's a spear point blade and you've got that safety and the automatic and it's a, it's a three inch blade. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a pretty, pretty sweet addition to the, to the uh, to the roster here, um, what do you think of a buck automatic? I don't know. I think uh, I, the only buck automatics I got to be totally honest that I'm familiar with are the um, are the 110 conversions, and well, they started as conversions. Now they do factory um, autos, and uh, I really like the look of this one. I'm not always a big fan, frankly, of of Buck's modern uh, tactical designs. I think this is a very understated and uh, classy looking uh, modern tactical knife. And uh, well, I hope they have a lot of great success with it. But I got to say, I'm, I'm loving that all three of these legacy, uh, legacy knives have really great steel. S35VN, S30V, and S45VN steel. So it's exciting to see uh, Buck come out with, uh, with this new legacy collection. So check them out. Okay, lastly is news that we've heard many times from Tops, a weird new knife from Tops. And as I mentioned at the outset, that's one of the things I really like about Tops is that they are a nimble company. They have a huge catalog of knives. And uh, each year they will present new designs and then run with them. This one was presented in January 2020 and in, in, in also in typical Tops fashion, they They'll show a knife about a year before they'll release it. And I'm not sure if that's by design or if they like to show what they're working on to get, you know, if they like to show what they're working on to get feedback to see if it's going to be worth um, their effort. This one they showed off in January 2020, the Bestia uh, Beast, if you will. I'm assuming, you know, I didn't even look that up. I'm assuming it's Beast. But if you look at it, it's an angular kukri. What a, what a wacky looking kukri this thing is. So you've got your, um, you've got your, your two opposing um, angled surfaces here. Uh, and, and, and it's all about the chop, as you can see. Now, on a normal kukri, you would see two curves. You would see that initial uh, curve in or recurve. And then you would see it flare back out into a big belly at the tip. This one, um, as you can see, is a very oblique angle, but it, it's two straight uh, runs of blade coming together. And it looks almost like a sickle to me. I, I, I think that when you swing this thing at whatever you're swinging it at, the material is going to be so dreadfully trapped inside of that geometry that it's just going to it's going to cut like mad. So though I don't find this thing very good looking because, you know, I'm kind of shallow in that regard. And I do like things to look good to me. This does not look good, but it looks like it's going to act well. It looks like it's going to perform well. Uh, if, if chopping is your need now, I'd like to see them or someone compare the bestia, this sort of straight angle kukri with a traditional kukri with the curves. I'd like to see 
how this uh, is does better and and how it could um, be outperformed by the traditional kukri because I I think that uh, this design is going to present different strengths than uh, than the traditional kukri. As usual, it's 1095 high carbon steel and uh, micarta, which is uh, which is a material choice we we expect from tops. That 1095 high carbon steel is a uh, is a real um, real tough outdoor um, steel. That's a blade steel that people use in camping knives and outdoor knives and large knives that receive impact uh, all the time because it's tough and it's easy to sharpen and it's easy to maintain. Um, you just got to make sure that it doesn't rust because it's high carbon. So they usually treat it with some sort of traction coating uh, and uh, well, or or they're, they have a number of different treatments now for the steel. Uh, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this thing does in terms of popularity. And then I know at some point, some madman out there will do, a, or mad woman, because they're a bunch of you now, who are going to um, get this and a kukri and compare them. I'm very interested to see what they come up with. So that is the weird new knife from Tops, the Bestia. Uh, still to come, we're going to talk about two of my, um, my favorite recent folding um, tactical knives. And, and I just want to sh show them because it, it, they strike me as an, as an incredibly contrasty pair. And I'm kind of obsessed with both of them. And we'll take a look at that. And then we will get to my top 10 sweatpants knives, quarantine knives. You might call them pajama knives, knives that are, that you can carry around easily in, in something light and unstructured pant wise. Uh, before we get there, I want to urge you to call the listener line 724-466-4487. I want you to unburden yourselves. Uh, I know you have a lot of things on your mind that you want to talk about. These are knife things. These are, these are important things that you have to get out, but the people around you don't want to hear it. Trust me, they don't want to hear it. Why do you think I started this podcast, man? So call us, unburden yourself, call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Let us know what your favorite new knife is. Let us know what you're excited about, what, what's going to come out that you really can't wait for, um, or maybe you have a stupid knife story. I want to hear it. I want to hear it because I have plenty of them, and I need the commiseration of knowing that there are other fools out there with their knives. Or maybe you want to just comment on something you've heard on one of the Sunday interviews here. Um, whatever it is, we want to hear it. Uh, please call the listener line 724-466-4487. Leave us a message and uh, we want to put together a montage, put it up on air and uh, well, and just um, glory, glory in all these uh, knife news bits and stories and personal anecdotes. So uh, stick with us and we'll be getting to the state of the collection. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, <clears throat> so two new knives that uh, you've heard me talk a bit about here and on Thursday Night Knives recently are these two. First, it's the um, Jason Knight designed uh, Fox Knives created MK Ultra folding kukri. So you look at that. I'm going to put this against the straight line. You look at that. Look at those curves. Look at all of the Look at all the luscious curves of this knife. Uh, you know, beautiful to look at, dangerous to behold, and uh, just just a just a pleasure of a tactical folder. So yeah, it's been one of my recent obsessions. I'm I'm a huge fan of this knife now, and and, and its designer, as I am the second one. Now, a study in contrast. Boom! Look at this, the Yo Jumbo. The Spyderco Yo Jumbo, it's about the same size and it couldn't be more different. Now, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I have to prove by showing these two knives off, but since this is the state of the collection and I, I got no new knives this week, huh, shocker, uh, I, I wanted to reflect on two that I've gotten recently and, uh, and show them together because these have been the two recently where I walk up to my knife cabinet, my, my knife toolbox, basically. And I go to these two and it's, oh, should I carry this or this? 
this or this. They're both thin. They're both light. They're both a little bit over four inches and, and very, very capable. And yet they're so very different. Um, and it's just, I don't know. It's kind of, it's, it's, Th this shows the two extremes of my of my knife taste, I guess. It's that super recurve, curvy um, blade shape that I love and that I think is so <clears throat> effective, <clears throat> excuse me, effective because of that curve, that deep curve on the swing here and on a pull cut. But then also, We've spoken with Michael Janich and we've talked a lot about the Warncliffe shape and how that straight edge is also an amazing uh, a cutter on a swing. You know, we, we think we might look at this and think, oh, that's all about thrusting because it's pointy and straight. But on a, with a Warncliffe, as you, as you swing that knife on a slash on an arc, you have that straight edge edge engaging all the way to the tip and that tip becomes uh like a tooth that bites into the that bites into the medium as you pass through it now with the recurve you know we're, we're all familiar with how the recurve works um and we're all familiar with how that why that kukri is such a good chopper because it it's continually presenting more and more edge on that curve until it shies away and becomes a slashing belly <clears throat> So um, I am not here to say that one is better, and I am not here to say that, uh, you know, I'm not here to say that one is better or that I like one better, but it's just kind of an interesting contrast. What do you think? What do you think is more, um, what do you think is a, makes a better tactical knife here? Is it the Kukri or is it the straight bladed Yojumbo? Um, I'm up in the air about it. I just uh, thought this would be an excellent excuse to show them both off together. Um, I'm loving this contrast. I'm going to keep um, thinking about it. And uh, maybe this warrants a t-shirt test one of these days. Um, or maybe even a pork man test. Are you familiar with the pork man? Pork man is something that Michael Janich uses to test his designs. And uh, also when he teaches Marshall Blade Concepts, MBC, uh, to his students, they will use something they call pork man. And what it is is a nice pork loin cut down the middle, butterfly, wrapped around a dowel of wood, and then that's wrapped with plastic and then jeans are put over it, of course, to simulate an arm and to see how, um, how deeply different knives cut into um, into that medium. So it might be an interesting uh, test to see which performs better, you know, and, and uh, I really have no real preconceived notions and uh, they're both winners in my book. So uh, it'd just be an interesting exercise. All right. So thanks for hanging in there for the state of the collection. I, I have, uh, you know, nothing new this week, but that doesn't mean that something that was new last week isn't still kind of new, right? So I'm going to, I'll keep talking about those things. All right, people. Now, the main event, the reason you've all come today to find out what I've been carrying around is a sick, old, convalescent, doddering man in his home, drifting around like a phantom. Oh, if only I felt better. Uh, I don't mean to make light of it. I know a lot of people have suffered way worse than I have. And, and uh, to, to all you, I want to say, hang in there. And we're all, we're all hoping and praying for you. I myself am extremely lucky. Thank God and thank my family and thank all of you for, for support. And um, I greatly appreciate it. So here, here I am to tell you about some great knives that I have in my collection that work beautifully in unstructured sort of loose pants that you might find yourself relaxing or convalescing in. Okay, first, this is the one that's been, uh, it's gotten the most carry so far. It is the Spyderco Yojimbo 2. Now this Yojimbo was, is 20 CV steel and, uh, carbon fiber, as you can see. Now this, unlike many Spyderco carbon fibers, 
this is actual carbon fiber. It's not G10 with a carbon fiber laminate. Now you can tell by looking at the side. That's carbon fiber through and through. This was an exclusive. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. It was either DLT or GP Knives. I cannot remember. It was one of those two, I believe. Uh, but this, this is, of all of the Yojimbos I've had, which I've had three, I got rid of my standard one. I have the M4 version from Blade HQ and this one. Now, this is the one I've used the most because uh, shortly after getting it, I dropped it on its tip. And then I felt like, well, geez, with a broken tip, you know, why shouldn't I use this now? So I used it for a lot of stuff. And then, uh, you know, what I did was uh, the tip broke on an angle, like about like that, except less. And so I sharpened that extra angle. So it was like a little mini Tanto edge. Let me turn this down. A skosh. There we go. It was like a little mini Tanto edge. And then after a while, I got sick of it, sent it off to Jared, Jared Neve, and he took off uh, enough to make that back into a sharp worn cliff. And uh, funny enough, he just removed just, just enough metal across to, to accommodate for the tip break. And it's still, it, I swear to God, it makes the knife feel lighter. I think that must be all psychological, but um, man, he made this knife wicked sharp and it feels lighter. And like I said before, I've always been a fan of the Yojimbo. And um, so for a small, light, capable knife to keep in your pocket when you're feeling compromised, this is a great, great knife to have. So this this has been the number one carry. Now, the rest of these are not in order. I'm just going to let you know that this one has been number one. Carried a lot. The next one is a fixed blade. And the only fixed blade I've been dropping in my pocket and carrying around. And it's the Bark River Knives Mini Bush Sacks. Now, this one is uh, wearing a Kydex sheath of my own uh, making. And uh, here it is. This is such a cool little knife, man. I love this thing. I got this a few years back uh, when it was, when it was, uh, you know, when there was a big run of these going and not realizing at the time how Bark River knives, when you snag them, if it's a model you like, you should hold on to it because you never know if they're going to bring the pattern back. They are like a Topps knives in that they have a huge catalog of knives, but unlike Topps knives, they don't have almost every model um, available at, at every moment. Topps knives seems to have many, 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 many of their models available at any given moment. Uh, Bark River does things a little differently. Um, so this is a three and a half, uh, three and three quarters inch blade. Um, <clears throat> it's got that traditional sax shape. Now, uh, here's a little aside. Uh, someone corrected me in the comments. I've been using, <clears throat> I've been using the, the knife. I've been saying sax, the sax is a Viking knife. And someone came on and corrected me, said, no, that's an Anglo-Saxon knife, uh, as you can tell by the name. So more in, uh, you know, uh, England and, and Western Europe, less, uh, less, Norway and and end up in the Viking realm. I think up there they called them Scramasax. I'm not sure. So I'm I, I I beseech the gentleman who corrected me to correct me further and and let me know what I should be saying for Viking knife. Um, I will do that research myself. But I'm interested to find out what this gentleman says as well. Uh, this is the the A2 steel uh, air air hardened uh, tool steel that. Um, Bark River Knives uses on most of their models. And you've got that beautiful uh, canvas micarta there with the red liners. I once tried to put a patina on this and was just made it look terrible. And then I po tried to polish it out and I've never been able to polish it out completely. Uh, this knife, this knife uh, lives next to the bed. It's one of my next to the bed knives. And um, well, 
it's it's light and wieldy and small. So it's been one of those knives that's fit right in the sweatpants pocket and comes out to open up letters or whatever I've had to do because I haven't been doing much. <laughs> All right, so the Bark River Knives mini bush sacks. Now next is one you might find surprising, but it's a very, I'm discovering how light this knife is over again. So this is the Strider SMF CC. That stands for concealed carry. And what that refers to is the thin and contoured handle you have here. So you see how that is curved rounded in this in this dimension and in this dimension. That's what makes a CC or concealed carry uh, strider. The standard strider, they call them Lego models. Um, everything here on the handle is squared off in cross section. So it's very bulky and uh, I shouldn't put it that way. I had a, an SMF that was a, a Lego and it, it was bulky for me. Um, I, I could see how the um, the SNG, which is the smaller version, would fit would fit and feel very comfortable, even in that blocky Lego configuration. But for the SMF, it was just a little bit too big for my hands in the uh, in the non contoured version, and so I ended up letting it go. I just never ever carried it. This one I bought from uh, Terrell Todd Zelric forty two, and. Uh, he had put a sweet edge on it and uh, gave me a great price on a, on a CC SMF. And uh, I don't know what it was that inspired me to bust this out just this past week. And I'd just been carrying it a lot. Um, it, it, I think it's because it's slim and light. It's just way lighter than the other version that I had and uh, a lot less bulky. And I feel like I've been rediscovering it this week and, very grateful to have this knife. It's a ridiculous knife. It's ridiculous and expensive, and but I love it, and it works so well. Um, now you say, what have you been using it for? Well, not much, but still, <laughs> it's a very sturdy and stout knife, and this one has a hollow grind, and so has a very, very nice edge. It's a little thick behind the edge, but even so, with that incredible... Uh, mirror polish edge that uh, Zell put on it, it cuts really well. So this is a bit of luxury that has been making me feel better in my pocket. Luxury, yes. Knives, can they be luxury? I talk about it all the time. That's what this show is about. These are luxury items, you know. In a sense, we may as well be talking about cars we don't need or uh, anything else we don't need, but that we really love and appreciate. And um, this design is something I, I'm glad I have because I'm not out there spending Strider money, um, but I'm so glad I have this knife. So been carrying that one a lot. Next, because it's small and wicked and so appealing, the Emerson Elvia. And of course, my Elvia wearing these uh, maroon carbon fiber, or maroon micarta handles from Tom over at Blades and such. Man, what a great knife this is. This has been in my pocket a lot because um, I'm going to be 100% honest. When I'm feeling compromised and, uh, you know, in the, in the home with the rest of the family, and I feel like it's still up to me to protect the house just in case, not that my wife can't, man, my wife is quite a badass herself, uh, so no doubt we would protect the house together. But I feel I have had moments where I felt like uh, I feel weak and I need something on me just in case. Heaven forbid. Now, this is where my imagination comes in. I have a dark imagination. I think anyone who has kids has a dark imagination. Um, you think of everything that could happen. And uh, whenever that happens or over this past week, I've gone for this knife because it's small, it's small, light, fits in the pocket, and is just an item of desperation that could that could really change the tide if need be. But also, it's a pleasure to pull out and look at. It's just a beautiful, weird-looking creation. As many people have mentioned, it looks like an Emerson with a broken stop pin. Um, but if you're familiar with the Ed Calderon 
uh, fruit knife Elvia design here. Uh, part and parcel of that design is that sort of outreaching blade. You've got this axis here where your handle is, or where, where your hand grips, and then you've got that strange looking angle uh, where the blade reaches out, and that is to maximize gross motor motions. Uh, you know, chances are, um, heaven forbid, you're in a situation where you need a knife in a tactical sense. It's quite possible that you're not going to have the manual dexterity of all those cool little collie moves that you've practiced, and you're just going to be swinging like a caveman. And this accommodates for the swinging like a caveman uh, uh, style of fighting. And um, that's about all I have in me this week. So the Emerson Elvia has been close by pretty much at all times. Pardon me while I pause for a sip. Dehydration's been a big thing this week too. <clears throat> okay, a lot of mouth breathing, more than usual. <laughs> all right, next, <coughs> excuse me is a knife that uh, uh, sometimes I feel bad showing off because you can't just go out and get it. Uh, this is the Niche Designs Ingress, designed by Nick Rogers of Niche Designs. This was uh, one of three prototypes. This was the second of three prototypes that he created, uh, that he designed, that uh, we, um, we knives made, we knife made, and um, tweaked, and... Uh, Nick was generous enough to give this to me, and I love this knife. It is a quirky, weird-looking thing, and it appeals to it appeals to my Yojimbo self. To me, it's got that same quality. It's got that same uh, purpose. You know, it's that straight-edge cutter. But this adds a little bit of Klingon to it, man. When I look at this knife, I think a little bit of that sort of Klingon weapon look. But that's just the look. When you have it nestled in your palm like this, there's nothing you can't slice through. This thing is unbelievable. It's got a super high height uh, flat grind. I mean, like that, that flat grind goes higher than most blades are wide. The blade stock is relatively thin and... At, at the edge, it is incredibly ridiculously thin. And I think that that was one of the design goals uh, for Nick when he was designing this thing, was making something incredibly thin and slicey. I should probably get that off my palm. Uh, he himself is a knife collector and a knife fan and um, was really going for performance as well as style when he created this knife. This, unfortunately, did not get fully funded on Kickstarter, but I am excited to see what Nick comes up with next. Uh, I had it on good word that he's working on some a gentleman folder, which I'm very excited to see. And um, when that comes out in the future at some point, we'll have him on the show to talk about it. Um, but yeah, so this is, the, uh, this is the Niche Designs Ingress. Um, a knife, incidentally, that Alex from Alex's Knife Box also has this prototype, prototype number two, in his collection. And he, he carries it a lot, too, and uh, will frequently comment on what a cool knife it is. I mean, and it just, it's, it's, a, it's symbolic to me of knife fans. And there, there are a number of people like this that we've spoken to now, um, Asher Knives. Uh, uh, off-grid knives, uh, just lots of different knife companies where the people have started as just knife collectors. And they're like, you know what? I could design something. I could, I could make a knife myself and uh, make it live up to my standards. And um, so I like the spirit behind this knife and I like the knife itself. So, thank you, Nick. All right. Next is, is the wild horse here. It's the wild horse. You know I'm not going to spend all week, even if I am ill, I'm not going to spend all week walking around with these puny little knives because I'm a manly man. And a manly man has to carry something manly. Of course, that's me joking. But here, uh, I've been carrying this. 
the Voyager XL Vaquero. Not sure why. I mean, I know why. I, I actually uh, was watching, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, this guy on YouTube, Stiletto. He's got a collect, great collection of XL um, Cold Steels. So I was watching him, and uh, he was going off about the Voyager and, and the Vaquero, and I was like, yeah, man, I love that knife. Grabbed it out of my cabinet and ended up carrying it for two days straight. It's light enough, you know, it's a big knife. It's, this is probably the least practical thing I've been carrying around. Uh, but with that FRN handle, excuse me, it is quite light for its size. And, you know, nothing says confidence in hand and in pocket than a uh, five and a half inch recurve knife like this. And another thing, <laughs> I know this is the knife that my brother carries around his house quite a lot uh, when he's chilling. And uh, eh, maybe it made me feel a little bit closer to my bro, Victor, too. Uh, I get I get weird like that when I'm sick. So having this thing in pocket and walking around made me feel like even though I'm sick, I could defend the house if need be. And it brings me closer to the ones I love. Yeah, welcome to my mind. Welcome to my fever dreams. No fever here, but... Welcome to my weird mind. And uh, yeah, so the Voyager Voyager XL Vaquero has been one of them. And um, I guess I could have swapped it out with any number of uh, uh, large cold steels with better steel and this and that and serrations. But something about this plain Vaquero today uh, or this week has been, has been really doing it for me. Kind of looks cool when I hold it up like that, doesn't it? The Extreme Recurve. Love it. So we go from one really, really straight edge to one really, really curvy edge. And now to one of my classiest knives in my collection. I've been carrying this around a bit. The TRM Atom. Now, I have a sentimental attachment to this knife, as I do many others. Uh, uh, Marianne Halpern from TRM has been on the show, and she's been on um, the... Uh, the town halls and she's just a great woman over there great person over at trm trm is a bunch of great people uh her husband and and she have been uh heading up this company uh since before they were even making knives they were they were um suppliers of titanium pieces for uh for other knife makers and then jumped in the game just like i was talking about before and man did they <laughs> thank god they jumped in because the stuff they're making is incredible. This is my only TRM. Um, the Atom is the is the largest of their folders, and um, it is a perfect knife. Yes, it's a perfect folding knife. It's got a very slender blade with a very nice high uh, flat grind. Frankly, the reason this thing's been in my pocket a lot recently is because I just got these scales. I mentioned them last week, I believe. Um, these are their aftermarket G10 forest green scales with that sort of wing pattern milled in. When I got this knife, I got this on the secondary market. Um, it came with two flat micarta slabs. As you can see, these new scales that I got, these wing pattern scales, are not only uh, milled in on this side, but they're also if you orient the knife this way, they're contoured and curved. They fill the hand better than the flat slabs, and they also feel better in hand, less edgy, if you will. So the TRM Atom has been one of those knives I've been carrying around quite a bit. This thing has incredible action to it, by the way. You just, you just gently nudge that, that thumb stud, and it rockets out. And then you get this great access to this nice thin liner lock. This thing really is, if you want a large, you know, relative to this is what, 3.6 inch blade or 3.4, I can't remember. Um, I guess it's about 3.4. But if you really want a locking gentleman's knife, I think TRM does it great, does it great. I mean, this thing is featherweight, featherweight, thin, sharp. Now, of course, 
what's the problem with TRM knives? No, they're not too expensive. No, they're not. Uh, the, the problem is they're hard to come by because they're not a giant company just pumping out knife after knife. They take special care and it takes a while, you know, to, to get these knives and they run them in batches. So I was lucky enough to get one from someone who was dumb enough to get rid of it. <laughs> just kidding. And uh, that that's, that's the only way I was able to get one uh, because as I, as I've said over and over, I'm not one of these guys who, who waits on websites and presses refresh uh, when new knives come out. Um, very rarely do I do that. And uh, never did that for the TRM. So I'm, I'm so grateful I got this one. Next, <clears throat> also a new, relatively new uh, acquisition. This little guy, it's like not having a knife in your pocket at all, except you have a, an extreme amount of capability. And what I mean by that is it's just so small and light. This is the uh, Doug Ritter designed um, Hogue Mini RSK Mark I. RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife. And uh, this is the mini version. Um, this was a gift from Doug himself after the last time he came on the show. Uh, he asked me if I had had a little one because I was talking about how much I liked the big one. And I said, no. He said, oh my gosh, I got to get you one. They're amazing. And uh, thank thankfully, he sent me this beautiful purple g Mascus version. Love that. I uh, love that. You see, you see the radiant pattern, the radiant sort of sunshine pattern coming from the pivot milled in there. And that, in addition to the contouring this way, the rounding this way, reveal all the cool different colored layers there. You got the light gray, the purple, the black all coming through uh, in just a spectacular look on this handle. Now, as far as performance is concerned, the Hogue version of the RSK-1, you know, this uh, used to be made by Benchmade, has a slightly longer handle and so fits in my hand much better than my um, mini Griptilian, my regular mini Griptilian. So they've done a lot with this knife, in my opinion, to, to evolve it to the next, next stage, next level. And uh, I'm so happy with what Hogue has done with this. My one issue with the Hogue knives has always been the thin gauge of the metal that they use for their pocket clips. That does not mean I've had any sort of failure or any sort of retention problem with it. It's just an aesthetic thing to me. It just feels thin, but it's springy. It, and, you know, Hogue knows what they're doing. Hogue knows what they're doing. They, they've been manipulating materials, <clears throat> excuse me, manipulating materials for a long time. And uh, they've done a beautiful job on this. Um, I probably will replace this clip with something smaller though, less lengthy. But this has been a great sweatpants knife, this little guy. Speaking of little guys, where did these guys go? This is my Tangram Santa Fe in sort of a baby poop brown handle. I never really realized that until I just looked at it. It's kind of an ugly color handle, but um, Tangram Knives, this, is, this was Kaiser's budget line. And um, I don't know what happened to them. They, they came out with a couple of great knives, that button lock, this and a couple of other uh, Dirk Pinkerton designs, but uh, they seem to have gone away. Maybe just uh, maybe just in deference to their um, to their Vanguard line, but this was a step below the Vanguard line in terms of expense. This is the Santa Fe, and to me, this was always the best Tangram that they came out with. Uh, this is the one that I ended up keeping, and uh, I love this thing. It's got such a such a great blade shape. You got a bit of belly, but you've got that acute sort of tip. Reminds me a bit of a it's a bit of a worn cliff, but with a with a curved blade, and uh, just just thin, light, small, aggressive, and very useful. Just been a big fan of this knife, and uh, kind of one of those things I forgot I had until I was you know, in my sick downtime perusing my, perusing the, the collection, I pulled this out and started carrying it. So 
Happy I, I held on to the Tangram Santa Fe. Lastly, but not leastly, yep, you know it. The Jason Knight designed Fox Knives produced MK Ultra. This thing has been very, it's been very difficult to kick this thing out of my pocket. I mean, can you blame me? Premium materials, you got N690 steel, which I think is great. You know, it's not super, super steel, but it'll do in a pinch, damn it. And you've got this great, great micarta handle. You've got titanium. You've got the lock bar insert and all that. But what you really have here is this Jason Knight design. I love Jason Knight's brand of kukri. And uh, he just nailed it on the folding version, I think. This is just a, an outstanding representation of the kukri in a folding version. And uh, really what, what's kept it in my pocket through this uh, quarantining period has been how light it is. It's extremely light for an over four inch blade. It's light, thin, capable, and just, uh, you know, just a pleasure to have on me at all times. Excuse me. And not for nothing. It makes me feel like I can conquer the world. All right, I can tell I'm getting a little corny, and I can also tell that some of that medicine is kicking in, um, <laughs> and uh, and maybe I'm getting a little goofy. But uh, this MK Ultra has been an outstanding knife to carry around during my quarantine, and uh, as have all of these. Now, that's not to say that these are the only knives I've been uh, I've been carrying around because I've also been literally carrying knives around and and placing them next to me where I sit down like the new BRK Boone 2 or my uh my monkey thumper been carrying that thing around a lot too placing it down next to me you know just in case I have to jump of course I don't that's this is a a way to keep my imagination moving and a way to keep my mind distracted from things that are going on so um that's that's a lot of what this collection is about. You know, I have a big collection of knives here and a, such a small, slender percentage of them get any sort of real use. And uh, um, just been sort of sitting back thinking about the, the whole concept of collecting. I've come to no conclusions yet, and I'm not sure if I will, but uh, just thinking about all the unused knives I have and and what they're for, and uh, well, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'm not getting rid of them all, but uh, oh, just thinking, just thinking, hmm, what other knives can I get to not use? <laughs> what knives do I not use can I get rid of to get other knives that I don't use? You know, this is something that comes up periodically on this show, and uh, and maybe the sickness has gotten me pensive, but in any case, people, uh, let us know here at the Knife Junkie podcast. It would make me feel great. Let me know what you've been carrying around. Let me know, you know, uh, when you're sick, what, what you, what you end up gravitating towards in your collection and what you end up uh, carrying around with you. And, uh, is this just me being weird, me being me, or is this something everyone does? Um, and they shift gears and they, and they hunker down. Call the listener line. Let us know. 724-466-4487. It's a way to unburden yourself. I swear. Save those relationships. Tell me, because I want to hear it. I'll be your knife therapist. I'll tell you. I'll tell you you're not wrong. I'll just tell you how, you, how you're right. Okay. All right. I think I've gone on enough today. Uh, please check us out on Instagram. That's where we announce a lot of the uh, of the upcoming interview videos and uh, show show pictures of my knives and such. And uh, we'll sign up for us there, or you know what I mean. Sub um, follow us there. Uh, check out the Facebook group. We've got a lot of very interesting people on the Facebook group posting things. Check us out there, and then of course always. Go to thenifejunkie.com. Check out the website that Jim's created. It is incredible. I know you're probably there right now watching this, but uh, check us out there. And then always, you can always check out thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, where you can help support us. Uh, lastly, before we close, I just want to, again, thank everyone 
uh, who, who sent me well wishes over this past week. Uh, I haven't responded to everyone. I think I put little hearts next to everyone at some point because it really does mean a lot to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. So uh, well, I think that's going to do it for this week and, on, and, and this number 191 supplemental. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it as always, sir. And to all of you who come every week and check out what we have to talk about here, uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. My name is Bob DeMarco, and I appreciate your joining us. And uh, let me just say that uh, over the next week, do yourself a favor. And don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.